today i am going to tell you a very funny incident and uh, this happened just last saturday so today i'm shooting the video on a wednesday so last saturday i got a call from pharma ceo of big tech pharma ceo and he calls me and says shekhar i'm worried because one of my senior uh, scientific assistant is planning to leave the organization and uh, he or she is very crucial to our current role so i said what's the problem in that people always leave jobs so you can always hire new people and he said that that's right but you know the amount of time we have spent training him or her is huge so i don't think we can hire someone at the same level so fast so i consoled him and said don't worry we have biotechnica we can always hire so yeah that problem was sorted out and we had placed the vacancies and we are almost going to fill this vacancy in the next three more days but uh, this also brings up a very funny uh, conversation which i had with him next i said that why don't you just hire freshers have a strong training system and uh, inject them faster so he said no 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 that, uh, that there is so much so much problems we face when we hire freshers so basically um we had a long conversation and today i'm trying to summarize that conversation for you and at the same time i'm going to tell you the reasons why pharma companies biotech companies are ignoring freshers if you understand that reason then you can implement the changes and then you can get hired fast before even i if i give you that uh, 10 reasons one very interesting reason is they don't know you so i have seen people who whom they know you know people hire people because of familiarity so if the ceo of that company knows you chances of you getting hired is high okay so we had a um, miss xyz she worked in a previous company but she also network with uh, another company ceo so she got when she left the job there she got placed here so what happened is people hire people when they are familiar so if you are not familiar to the company hiring process uh, the hr recruitment team or the ceo chances of not not getting hired is high but you will be like okay as a fresher how should i do that well networking is the key so now let's get started with today's video i'm going to give you 10 important uh, pointers which you should keep in mind now the first thing which we observe is they have a very stringent skill requirement and this specialized expertise like do they want gc lcms all this high quality uh, skill set or maybe bioinformatics or ai ml they are looking for someone who don't have just the theoretical approach to problem solving but a practical approach so the other day i was in iisc and uh, the scientist said that hey we cannot train this this uh, you know online because the hand dexterity has to come big so that individual knows how to handle an instrument in the real world in a three dimensional world so the truth is cutting edge te- techniques are coming up and if we are not doing hands on training if we are not doing uh, the learning path if we don't have the learning path we will get rejected so that is where the first uh, lesson for us is stringent skill requirements so we must have hands on the second one is there are ample amount of experienced individuals already available so why would they hire freshers now how do you solve that problem of course networking is one of the solutions but yeah what happens when they hire experienced people is immediately they can get started they know how to handle the instruments they know what is expected from them so there is immediate productivity right and generally companies have very highly ambitious timelines like okay in 7 days you're supposed to deliver this result or whatever so there will be ambitious timeline and followed by that of course there is a lot of competition already going on freshers and experience so obviously the experience wins so it is high time that you gain experience and how do you gain experience there are two to three ways you can gain experience one is government projects you can join them contractually second will be doing hands on training by joining biotechnica or uh, going somewhere else and the third would be obviously volunteering for a particular organization and doing uh, the job so that way you can gain experience the next one which um, he told me and of course uh, we have seen it all, again and again is companies don't want to spend on training and that's true they don't want to spend on you they want productivity out of you they expect that you should be ready so many students from all across india come to me asking uh, why this company is rejecting rejecting me the truth is they what happens is there's a small startup and there there are big farmers right so what big farmers do is they don't hire freshers they will hire from these startups 
So what these startups uh, ended up doing is now if we are hiring the uh, freshers, we are training and these guys are taking away. So we will not do that. We will also hire experienced people only. So this is where the trend changed. So what happens is you should know that they are not going to spend. But you have to learn. So you will have to spend. You will have to spend so that you can get the hands-on training. And then once you are ready, once you are job ready, they will take you. Now, I can refer you guys to many of uh, these uh, companies. But again, they will say, hey, you're not ready. You are not having the right experience and skill set. So I will not take you. So training expenditures, they don't want to have. They also do, may not be having a budget or rather I would say they want fast results. And experienced people give that. So if you are a fresher, spend on your training. You have to take training at Biotechnica. We have molecular biology, biochemistry, microbiology, hands-on training. We have the training for bioinformatics, AIML. So what are you waiting for? You can join us and get that training. The next one which, uh, which the CEO said to me is, there is a high cost aversion effect. So for example, when we are doing drug development, every minute is important, right? So there is immense financial risk if something goes wrong, right? And it, it can have an impact on the life of the patients also, right? So, well, they don't want to take risks. So that is where if it is a very crucial role, they will obviously look for highly skilled people. Second thing is, most of the bio, biotech products and services require rigorous validation because you have to comply with the FDA regulation while freshers may not have that. So it is important to understand the good manufacturing practices. It is important to deliver results. And of course, many a times, if you don't have a proven track record, companies will be skeptical because you don't have somebody's recommendation or somebody's, you know, experience letter, stuff like that. So, you know, they don't want to take that risk because then their FDA license will be at risk. Then the second thing, of course, uh, like I said, FDA compliance, stringent compliance regulations are there. You must have heard of this news, various cough syrup companies, uh, their license was cancelled and the uh, poisoning happened. And, you know, there are a lot of compliance issues which happens, right? So companies don't want to take risks, especially biotech and pharma companies. They must abide by the strict regulatory guidelines of safety and quality assurance and they feel that freshers might not, might not be able to do it. So as a fresher, you should learn good manufacturing practices. You should work in an environment as an intern. You should understand the validation processes. You should understand how established SOPs has to be followed. And uh, many of the times you might be unfamiliar with that. So at Biotechnica, we are also planning to start training on good manufacturing practices and uh, SOPs. So stay tuned. You can always take that. Now, followed with that, of course, uh, pharma companies are supposed to document everything and it has to be in a comprehensive manner. It has to be in a professional manner and it, all the records must be kept. So that is where, you know, that needs a lot of hand holding. So they just don't want to avoid that. Then, of course, coming to the intellectual property. So as a fresher, they don't want to hand over their intellectual property to you because they are not sure whether you will last longer because many of you, many students say that, hey, I will join here for six months and then I'll go for a, a PhD or MSc. So they're a little hesitant that if we, if we hand over the intellectual property to this person, will he be able to maintain that secrecy, the confidentiality and non-disclosure, which, you know, becomes a problem. So what, how you can avoid that? You can always say that I'm ready to sign a non-disclosure agreement and I'm going to stay here for longer, let's say three years or five years. When you say that, the company also trusts you and they can give you the job faster. Next, which we have, what we have seen is there are talent gaps, okay, where the experienced people also don't have that, um, you know, skill set, while a fresher can get in. So, uh, for example, uh, right now you have the interdisciplinary knowledge gap, which we are seeing that uh, companies are now looking for AIML and bioinformatics, but experienced people also don't have that. So, a bioprocess guy will not have a um, bioinformatics training. So, you can actually, as a fresher, get in faster into the industry if you have interdisciplinary training. For example, AIML in biology or bioinformatics or for, for that matter, a PhD in uh, uh, physical side of biology, stuff like that, physics side of biology. So yeah. Next, uh, one important thing, what uh, the foreign companies have told me, and this is something I included, especially because many of you want to go abroad and work, is uh, they don't want to get into the visa hack you know, hassle. So if you already have the visa or, you know, you're already in that city or uh, state or country, then they will hire you faster. So uh, 
US company may not hire you from India unless you are really unique, right? They will always look for somebody within their country. Right? So if you want, for example, right now I'm hiring for a biotech company, but they strictly said that I want this person to join in the next seven days. Now in seven days, nobody will come from Delhi or Himachal Pradesh to Bangalore, right? So I have to look for talent locally. So this is what happens. So when you're looking for a talent in a particular city, go to that city and stay there so that you can get the job faster. That's one mantra I can give you. So visa complexities, they don't want to get in. Um, so that's one. And the second thing is they don't want to pay for the relocation costs and all that. So that's one of the constraints they face. Now followed with that, the funding constraints. Now biotech and pharma companies, you know, they are always tied up for funds because all the funds is going into r &D. And they don't want really any of the funds to go into any of the other administrative jobs. So uh, the startups have a small runway and it may not be more than six months or 12 months, right? And there are always R&D priorities and they have a short horizon that they will have to achieve this within like six months, right? So they don't want to uh, hire someone and train for six months and then they get the results. So this is where basically we have uh, been seeing. Now, at the same time, as a fresher, you do have uh, advantage. And now that advantage is like, uh, suppose you are playing basketball. So there is a tall guy and you're the short guy. So the tall guy has the advantage that he can uh, basket faster because he is tall. But if, since you are a short guy, you can move fast, right? Same way. If you have less experience, you can move fast, gain more experience in AI, ML, bioinformatics because your learning ability is still intact. So if you learn that, then you transform from a generalist to a specialist. And then you can get that job. You have to look at what manual jobs biotech industry is doing and how can you automate it. And you have to look at what technical jobs which a biotech company is doing, which can be commercialized and learn that. And that's how you can fulfill the evolving needs of the biotech industry and get placed as a fresher. Now, the way forward for all of us, all of all the freshers out there who are looking for a job in the biotech pharma industry after their BSc, MSc or PhD is, you have to know that networking means a lot in the biotech sector. You have to know that reskilling programs like what we Biotechnica has or the IAC incubated lab, which we have where we do the hands-on training or the university partnerships, which we are doing, uh, you have to know that now it's going to be easier in the next three years to hire talent. Now that uh, I'm also a trustee of iBiome, which is one of the largest startup groups in uh, Karnataka for biotech. So I will be able to definitely help you there. But remember that non-traditional talent is getting placed faster. If you just have a biotech degree, it's not going to help. If you have a biotech degree with knowledge of AI, ML, bioinformatics, biomolecular biology, you have done the hands-on, you have got experience, recommendation letter, and of course, you people know you, you can get placed faster. So now coming to the salaries range you can get. So it ranges in between 25,000 and goes up to 60,000 for freshers. I've seen that. And if you are a PhD, then it starts at around 50,000 and goes up to 80,000, 1 lakh, 2 lakhs. So if depending on the experience which you have. So as a fresher, of course, it starts at around 50 for a PhD. And for a MSc, it starts around 25, 30. Well, the way forward for all of you is to subscribe to Biotechnica. Stay put. Keep looking at all the job description. Find out what you're missing. Learn all those things. And of course, take help of Biotechnica and learning all those things because elsewhere you may not get that quality. And then you will get the job. So do not be disappointed. What that CEO told me, I just told you bluntly, but at the same time, I want to tell you that I am on your side. I want to make sure that each person out there who is talented gets placed in this, this ever-evolving biotech industry. So stay tuned and keep shining. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, keep shining. Bye-bye.